So seems it's time. So let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining to our session. Uh, the title of the presentation is Designing and Operation of OpenStack Cloud on 100 Physical Servers. So uh, my name is Ken Garashi, and I'm leading the project. And here, Hiromichi Ito-san from Virtual Tech Japan. Also, Akiro Motoki-san from NEC. So, uh, you may or may not know, uh, this morning, uh, Docomo and NEC uh, did a press release about uh, POC of uh, OpenStack Neutron. And uh, during the talk, we are going to share the detail of the press release. So, when we started the project, uh, first uh, we needed those informations. For example, uh, hardware and resources and uh, performance. Also, uh, hardware and the software configuration. So, we tried to find those information at the moment, but uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get those information. So, finally, we decided to get this information by ourselves through the simulation. <laughs> and uh, this is the environment we use for the simulation. We used uh, Stabet, uh, owned by Japanese National Institute of Information and Communication Technologies. And uh, this environment is usually, uh, actually uh, free for everyone and open to any companies and uh, organizations. So if you want to do a similar uh, test like ours, or one of each uh, simulation, this could be a very good environment. Anyway, uh, this is a network configuration we created on top of Stabet. Uh, network itself is quite common. There are two uh, network layers. One is leaf switch, and another is a spine switch. And uh, between switches, between switches and the uh, servers, there are at least uh, two physical connections, network connections. So let's go to the first topic, the network configuration. In the beginning, uh, we need to s uh, think of a network redundancy. And at, at that time, we uh, consider two configurations. One is a uh, multi-chassis link aggregation. That is quite uh, popular today. Creating a bonding at the server side. Also create an MRAG between two switches. And using the ECMP, we distribute the packet. And uh, another configuration is quite new. You know, uh, today, uh, we can put uh, multiple default gateway to the server side. So in this configuration, uh, we can uh, do load balancing at the server side, not the switch side. The beauty of this one is uh, we can take all the complexity from the network to servers. But the problem is it's not mature, not uh, tested a lot. The second one is about a network co a neutron configuration. So virtual network creation is essential to increase network security. So we need to support ML2 with tunnel network configuration. And in this configuration, actually there are two type drivers. One is VXRAN and another is GRE. And uh, at this moment, uh, we decided to use a VXRAN because it seems, uh, it seems it has a better, uh, it is efficient for the load balancing. And also, uh, there are two mechanism drivers. One is OpenVSH, and another is Linux Bridge. So using that testbed environment, we check those performance. So actually, uh, this is a performance. In this simulation, we just create a one VM uh, one server and one receiver on top of uh, different physical hosts and uh, <laughs> measure the throughput. So this is the result. As you can see, uh, 
Actually, there is no much difference between the Linux bridge and the OpenVSH. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you can see uh, end host uh, ECMP shows the worst performance. So finally, uh, we decided to choose uh, MLAG with OBS, seems the best for us in terms of performance, potential stability. But we had uh, one uh, serious issue. Uh, to get uh, this throughput, actually, we need to increase VM's MTU from uh, 1,500 to 8,950. But uh, still, we can get only 4 gigabps, though there are 20 gigabps, 20 gigabps uh, physical networks. So we did more tests. And uh, in this test, we increased the VMs number. And finally, we created 477 VM for the server side, and also same number uh, for the receiver side. So total around uh, 1,000 server VM, VMs are created. And uh, this is the uh, performance. And uh, you can see, if you, you, use, uh, if you set uh, MTU 1,500, uh, even though we have a 20 GB physical network bandwidth, still performance is around uh, 2 GB in the best case. And even though we incre increase the uh, MTU, bigger MTU, still the best performance is around 10 GB. So utilization is only 50%. So we analyzed the cause of the slow throughput. And um, I think uh, this is the uh, problem. Uh, if we, you turn on the BX run, then uh, you need to, uh, software need to do uh, packet encapsulation and decapsulation processing at the server side. So it, it means it increases the CPU load. And uh, those processes actually uh, hit the CPU load. So that's why you cannot get a better network performance. So we considered solve the problem by using a network card with BX run offloading support. The actually, uh, this is a quite new result by using a BX run offloading leak. And uh, in the simulation, uh, we used uh, two physical servers for sender side and the two physical servers for the receiver side and just increase the number of VMs. And uh, you can see the great throughput improvement. Okay, so for the smaller MTU size, there is a huge improvement by turning on a VX run. And uh, even though the bigger MTU size, still we can get pretty good uh, performance improvement. And the, okay. And it also reduces the CPU load. As you can see, almost 30% uh, of the CPU load uh, decreases from the server side and the receiver side as well. So finally, we decided to use a BX run of road NIC. And uh, as for the MTU, there is actually two choices, small MTU size and a big MTU size. And this is uh, our decision. Our decision is uh, we decided to set MTU 9000 on a physical host, but uh, still delivers the uh, usual MTU 1500 through the DHCP server. So it means uh, we let users can choose uh, to use a bigger MTU or smaller MTU, because uh, bigger MTU sometimes cause a problem like uh, uh, com communication over the internet, then it causes some problems. So we give uh, users to change MTU freely. So next topic is about uh, high availability. So if your system requires a people 
sitting <laughs> next to the system all the time, uh, usually you need 10 to 12 people more. Uh, 12 people, more people. But uh, this is a huge investment for us, so it is impossible. Uh, so, however, uh, if we can delay fixing a problem later, then we can only work on weekday. So that's why uh, to, to achieve this one, uh, HA, high availability becomes very important. And our decision is we put uh, double redundancy for hardware and uh, triple redundancies for software. So this is the overall design of our HA. Uh, we, we are still using uh, some commercial product on the lo load balancer side. And uh, below the load balancer, we put uh, MySQL, actually uh, Galera clusters, and OpenStack API, and Zabbix. Uh, reason why we are still using a uh, uh, commercial load balancer is mainly uh, we need to terminate uh, SSL at the load balancer side. And uh, others, like a uh, RabbitMQ, uh, neutron agent, and um, actually we, we are using a uh, mask for OS installation. Those has its, uh, we rely on their own HA mechanism. So let me talk about a bit uh, MySQL HA. This is our configuration. So using load balancer, we uh, use only one node for read and write. And uh, total, we have four nodes and one arbitrator. Arbitrator is only used for column-based <coughs> porting. Actually, we, those four nodes retain the data. And uh, as for the health check, uh, we check the TCP connections and the status of each node. So this this status means uh, as long as the state is changing in this area, uh, load balancer sends the data to the node. So some configuration says uh, check just only the status two and four, but uh, uh, if there is a, a synchronization, then there is a state change happen from here to here. That's why uh, we are checking this status instead of using these two states. Anyway, uh, this is a procedure for node recovery. So there is a node failure this moment. And uh, then the load balancer detects the failure by checking like those state. And then it migrates the connection from DB1 to DB2. And uh, after fixing DB1, we do state synchronization used IST or SST from the lowest priority node. And after that, uh, just before bringing back the database to the cluster, we need to change the priority. If you don't change the priority, uh, when the DB1 back to the cluster, then the uh, connection migrated from DB2 to DB1. But uh, we don't want to change the connection frequently. So that's why we change the priority just before recover the DB1 to the cluster. And finally, it gets a healthy state. Okay. And uh, we also measure the recovery time for each synchronization. This is a uh, recovery time for IST. And uh, you can see uh, this takes a long time compared to others. This is because uh, there is a difference, a uh, DB performance difference from the left side and right side. For the left side, actually the maximum uh, DB performance Maximum is like uh, 340 uh, TPS, but the right side is, has more than 1,000 TPS. 
And uh, th this case, there is a 24 TPS background traffic. So as for the recovery node, it gets uh, 2040 TPS. And in addition to it, the recovery node needs to get a more lost state from the other node. So in, in that case, ideally, uh, we need to have uh, at least a double uh, DB performance than, uh, than the average uh, traffic. So in, so in this case, average traffic is 240, but the maximum uh, throughput is 340. So it can get a double of the performance. That's why the recovery time gets wrong. Same things happen for the SSD as well. And the SSD needs to send more states. So it means it takes more time. So it is important to prepare a good uh, DB to think of our uh, DB recovery. This is a, a state transition for disaster recovery. When you lose, lose all the data, then restore from the backup is the only way. So for the first node, we just restore the database from the backup and fixing all the stuff and run MySQL and start synchronization. After finishing this synchronization, actually those two nodes can be a donor, so next synchronization can be done simultaneously. And uh, also, uh, we measured a uh, time for each state, and uh, you can see, uh, as for the restore, actually it takes uh, almost 100 minutes, but others is quite fast. Uh, reason why it takes 100 minutes is uh, our strategies, we create a, a DB backup every 12 hours, and during 12 hours, we just take a, a binary log. And uh, reflecting 12 hours binary log to the database actually uh, takes a time, almost uh, 98 minutes time is just uh, used for applying a binary log. But the other state is quite, quite, quite fast. And uh, in the best case, we can recover all the OpenStack database in three minutes from a disaster. And uh, also, uh, this is uh, Mars HA. Actually, uh, Mars includes DNS, DHCP, TFTP. But uh, those are uh, HAs kind of straightforward. For DNS, we create just a master thread. DHCP, there is a replication. And uh, MARS, uh, HA for MARS itself is quite easy. Uh, we just use a VM and uh, <coughs> recover from VM if there is failure. Because uh, MARS, uh, we just need uh, when, uh, when we need to deploy a new server, then we need a mask. So as for mask, we no, do not need to keep running uh, all the time. So just use this simple backup. Finally, uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, we add, if we add a much RabbitMQ address to the configuration file, then uh, RabbitMQ H is uh, automatically supported by the client side. But problem with this one is uh, at least we need uh, three RabbitMQ, ideally five RabbitMQ nodes against a uh, split brain. So to, to, to decrease the RabbitMQ node, uh, we can take <coughs> this, uh, this scenario as well. So just using a load balancer and uh, use just one node for read and write. Uh, yeah, this can decrease the number of RabbitMQs. So in our, uh, our case, uh, we are still considering uh, pros and cons of those tools. 
and we have not decided yet. So next is neutron HA. And uh, I hand over to Motoki san. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to talk about the neutron HA. Mm, first, uh, at first, I'd like to explain the network node setup and the basic strategy for HA for each network node. Neutron has uh, several network oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, neutron have uh, multiple, uh, several agents, uh, DHP agent, L3 agent, metadata agent. Uh, these are required for basic operation of a neutron network. Uh, these, are, these, these agents support various uh, net HA mode. Uh, DHP agent, it supports active, active, mm, Mode, so we can we we can may uh, we can assign a single network to multiple DHP agent, so uh, to make a service available even if one node failed. Uh, this is very simple configuration in Neutron DHP agents per network. Uh, it is better to set this number mm, two or three. Uh, it is because DNS, uh, DHP agents are also uh, used as DNS server, but the DNS, most uh, Linux or Unix uh, resolve, resolve mechanism only supports three DNS servers. Oh, next is a layer three agent. It supports at now only support active standby mode. Or oh, if it fails, uh, ah, it means we can assign a router only to a single network L three agent. So it fails, we need to migrate a router on the host to another agent. Or oh, final one is a metadata agent. Uh, it, has, it is very simple. It has no state, so to keep HA, what we need to do is just to keep uh, metadata running on the network nodes. Oh. <coughs> Let me talk about uh, monitoring and uh, failure detection. Oh, to Keep HA. We need to uh, HA is roughly categorized into two parts: detection and uh, recovery. So, first point is uh, detection by monitoring. We need to monitor network agent in from various aspects. Uh, one is a uh, oh, one is a uh, data plane. Mm, yeah. For internal network, we we can ping to the network node from on from uh, VXLAN network, and uh, layer three agent has uh, also connected to external network. So we need to check connectivity of external network too. And uh, the second part is a uh, control plane reachability. Um, we can check uh, agent uh, uh, agent arrivalness by by using uh, agent list through Neutron API. Uh, each agent reports uh, its state to the Neutron server through message queue periodically, so we can check. Um, but we need to, we can check the state by REST API. And uh, another point is uh, control plane reachability, so we need to check ping too. Okay. Oh, this is a summary of the monitoring point. Oh, so we need to, uh, <coughs> 
we need, need to monitor various points to detect network node failure. So the next topic is uh, recovery from failures. This consists of three steps. First, we need to disable agent uh, on disable agent uh, which we failed uh, on a fail node. Uh, this uh, we set the admin state up to. Uh, of the agent to force by doing this um, the, the agent is excluded from scheduling or scheduling scheduling means uh, as uh, allocation of the neutron scheduler the second uh, then um, we migrate routers on the failure node to another Agents. This is simply done by REST API, the uh, disassociated and uh, associate network or uh, L3 agent command. Then, oh, fine, oh, uh, it's migrated to another router. Then finally, um, we shut down network interface of the failure node. Um, when control plane failed, uh, we cannot control the network node uh, no longer. So we need to shut down the interface or uh, shut down node to avoid unnecessary confusion. So, uh, this is just a uh, tips uh, to Check external network connectivity. External network is connected, uh, reachable, reachable from uh, internet. So we would like to uh, avoid to access the node itself. Uh, so we use uh, network namespace and assign the IP uh, assign the IP address in network namespace and check the connectivity from the external network. Uh, I'd like to show uh, some results from ex our experiment. The first is uh, traffic during router migration from one agent to another agent. Uh, we injected a control frame, uh, control frame failure. <coughs> um, then uh, our monitoring system detects the node failure, a uh, control frame failure. So start migrate uh, routers from another er layer to agent. Uh, this is a, uh, it is measured mm, by IPATH from external network to one VM on the internal network. Um, during, after 10 seconds, uh, uh, the traffic, uh, uh, at this time, at this point, the uh, router migration started, and um, traffic also recovered uh, 10 minutes after the, after starting migration of the associated router. Uh, next one is uh, how how to how uh, the progress of router migration. Um, in this case, uh, we migrated 88 routers from one agent to another agent. And uh, the router migration is requested by REST API request. And but the processing in layer three agent is a uh, bit slow compared to the REST API request. But uh, in case of uh, control plane failure, uh, this uh, this slowness does not affect the data plane traffic. Uh, it only affects the control plane availability. So uh, this slowness is not so uh, big. So not so big problem. Okay. Uh, 
the final topic is uh, a possible improvement. Uh, we tested uh, with ice house neutron. So in in Juno, there are some improvement in layer three agent or other agent. Uh, one big topic is layer three agent. Uh, one uh, to integration with layer three agent HA. Uh, layer three agent HA in Juno uh, improve the data plane uh, availability for internal network. Oh, sorry. But uh, at, at, at this time, it, it doesn't monitor external network, so, so we need to uh, we still need external monitoring. And uh, it, it also needs uh, C plane. We also need to monitor C plane. So, uh, L3 HA just for just check the data plane availability. So, we need to combine uh, various methods. Uh, another possible imp there are possible improvement point. Uh, Juno, Juno neutrons support uh, layer three auto rescheduling when the network node is down, but uh, uh, to allow uh, scheduling <coughs> from out external through the a REST API, uh, we need to. Also, need to administrate up is need to be considered, uh, uh, and for DHCP agent also rescheduling or release scheduler uh, possible improvement improvement, and we would like to contribute to improve these features. Okay. So, <coughs> in last minutes, mm -hmm. we wanna talk about. Uh, management resources. Hmm. So more or less, uh, those are resources we need for the management plane. And uh, <coughs> in some day, uh, in, uh, we, I, I asked each people to give us uh, information about how much resources they need. And uh, they give me this number. Uh, for controller API, uh, there are three. Message queue are three, ideally five. Database, as I mentioned, four for node and one for arbitrator. Neutron, three. Monitoring, three. Storage, uh, tens of terabyte. And deployment, uh, MongoDB is not included. And two. So total management resources <laughs> becomes like this. But uh, actually, uh, there are <laughs> quite a few <laughs> Nova compute. So, as for the management resources, it is important to the sizing. Sizing is very important. It means uh, we need to think of which servers can integrate into one server. For, for this, uh, we put a huge load to the test bed, and we measured a load of each node. So one of the typical tests is a scalability test. Uh, in this test, uh, we increase the number of VMs as much as much as possible. And uh, here is a ha hardware resource boundary. But even though uh, we create more VM than the physical resources, actually OpenStax <laughs> works well. Anyway, uh, this is uh, uh, traffic uh, we measure at each server. Uh, as for the <coughs> API servers, actually uh, no CPU load a much. But, uh, quite a lot of uh, memory usage uh, ma was measured. And uh, for RabbitMQ, actually almost nothing, no load. <laughs> and uh, for MySQL, also no CPU load, but uh, <coughs> you know, uh, MySQL can utilize uh, physical memories as much as possible. So the memory uh, usage is quite a big. And uh, this is also very important, uh, TPS. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we uh, share one MySQL from the OpenStack and the Zabbix. And the actual 
uh, DB traffic is like around uh, 300 query per second. So, but uh, if you can divide uh, MySQL, uh, OpenStack needs at least uh, 150 TPS. And as I said before, for if you consider the synchronization, to you should uh, prepare a 300 TPS for MySQL, but uh, 300 is not a difficult number. It's easy. And uh, this is a uh, uh, monitoring. Uh, we are using uh, Zabbix for monitoring, and uh, those are the numbers, uh, DB size we need. Actually, those are the numbers uh, we are monitoring, and uh, those are the time we are retaining data. So in this uh, setup, we need uh, 86 gigabyte. And this is the uh, size for the OpenStack. Uh, during the days, we did a lot of tests, like a scalability test, and then measure the difference, uh, the size, size of the difference between the two days. And uh, as you know, uh, today, OpenStack has uh, many uh, garbage collection mechanism like uh, Keystone. You can delete uh, expired Keystone from MySQL by running this one. So the uh, DB size increase is not so big. Finally, uh, let me talk about uh, deployment tool. Uh, there are too many good deployment tools, but uh, at this moment, we are uh, creating our own Ansible base. Uh, this is because one, one reason is uh, we can change the configuration, especially HA and the Neutron are a little bit different to others. And another is we, are, we have already uh, used Ansible for the operation, and we don't want to run a lot of soft software more than that. That's why uh, we are currently using Ansible for the deployment and uh, operation. So this is uh, some tips we learned from the scalability test, but uh, running out of time, just skip. Then the end. So thank you for listening. So <laughs> we, I think we can pick uh, one or two questions. Do you have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, so the important this first one is uh, maybe it is famous, but I need to be clear. Uh, if you create a security group, then the default security group is created, and uh, you know if um, there are hundred servers sharing the one default security group, and if you create a one a new VM, then. Uh, this VM's entry is created to all the 100 nodes. So if you share the default security group, then the OBS agent becomes stuck easily. So important thing is if you want to do scalable test, you should delete the default rule from the security group. This is very important. We spend like a one, one week to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to find out the problem, actually. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, uh, so uh, until the next meeting, uh, our group is here. So if you have comments or questions, please free to come and discuss. Thank you very much. <laughs>